Okay, so today we have a moon day, meaning that there are seven different aspects taking place here today. All seven of them are involving the moon. Moon days help us to get emotionally in alignment, really refining our wants, needs, desires, new realizations, new levels of awarenesses popping off, really helping us to choose to decide to pick a path to actually move forward. Now, this is an interesting moon day just because this is a relatively quote unquote quiet day sandwiched in between yesterday, Wednesday being a very crazy and chaotic day in the cosmos. And of course, Friday is going to be a wackadoodle day as well. We talked about this in the Ascension forecast for this week. So if you haven't listened to that, I'm going to recommend you do so. This is the very last full day of Aries season. We will see the sun shift into Taurus energy here tomorrow with some major astro events popping off to support that dramatic shift as well. And I think that we really have to take advantage of this quote unquote calmness sandwiched in between these two very crazy chaotic kind of days. That being said, the moon in Leo energy will be going void, of course, at 8.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Virgo energy at 10.12 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time. So the transition from Leo energy to Virgo energy is always felt probably not in the best way that it could be felt, mostly because, of course, the Leo energy, it's a fire sign. So we have some pep in our step. We're bold. We're brave. We're courageous. We're playful. We're entertaining. We definitely are more extroverted than anything else. The Virgo energy is an earth sign ruled over by Mercury. Again, mind over matter. So we become a little bit more withdrawn. We are definitely more, I'm going to say, present in our physical bodies, more aware of our physical environments, and we're definitely focused on the problems. Why? Because the Virgo energy is the problem solver of the Zodiac, but we have to actually be aware of the problems, of the issues, in order to actually fix, heal, repair, resolve them. So more often time than not, when we have the moon in Virgo energy, the first part of the moon being in this Virgo energy, we're kind of, let's say, cluster effed. We're frustrated, we're agitated, our mental plane is focused on the issues, on the problems that we've been banging our head against the wall about. Halfway through this particular lunar cycle, we start coming up with solutions. And then, of course, as we kind of near the moon leaving the Virgo energy, we're doing the processing, we're sorting out, we're figuring out what needs to stay, what needs to go, what we could do better, what we need to do less of. And then, of course, we shift into Libra energy that helps us find peace and harmony and balance in our new choices, in our new decisions. I think the interesting dynamic here is, of course, Mercury, who rules over the Virgo energy. Mercury is still retrograde in Aries energy nonetheless. So there's a lot of fire going on in the mental plane. We're kind of all over the place, scatterbrained, really brilliant ideas come and then they leave just as quickly. And this is going to be a very interesting dynamic to watch the moon move through this Virgo sector because, of course, the sun will be shifting into Taurus energy here tomorrow while the moon is in Virgo. So that is Earth on Earth energies. And we have some major epiphanies popping off again, major astrology events popping off as the sun transitions into that Taurus energy. So the moon in Virgo is very analytical, very focused on the issues, on the problems in order for us to fix, heal, repair and resolve them. And we're just a little bit more, let's say, to ourselves. We have a lot to process in our mental plane, in our heart space. We're trying to kind of connect the dots and make the pieces fit, so to speak. And there is going to be a lot of extra pressure, extra tension in that mental plane. So definitely make a note of that. So again, as I previously mentioned, there are seven different aspects taking place here today, all seven involving the moon. The moon, well, in the Leo energy before going void, of course, is going to make a tough interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. 
I also think it's an interesting dynamic because if you listen to Wednesday's energy forecast, you would know that we kick the day off with an aspect between the moon and Leo and Neptune and Pisces. We also close the day off with the moon and Neptune. And what that particular energy did, it was kind of reminding us, giving us flashes, giving us glimpses of the vision of the goal of the dream that our higher self now want us to pursue. Well, in great contrast, this particular interaction between the moon and Leo and Neptune and Pisces is going to show us where it is that now we're not feeling so good. We're not feeling so hot with a lot of the ideas that we've been popping off with that we were even semi excited about here yesterday. We're not seeing the clarity and even that it's not so much that we need to be reminded of the vision, but we're losing confidence in ourselves. We're losing certainty and assurities that the path, the plan, the strategy that we thought we were going to walk suddenly now the fears, the doubts, the insecurities get into us. We're overwhelmed with the different options. We're overwhelmed with the to-do list. We're overwhelmed with what we would actually have to boss up to in order to bring these new goals, new visions to life. So it's at this particular interaction that we actually start shutting down. We're so overwhelmed with what's going on. We're so uncertain. We're so confused that we actually just don't even want to deal with life at this point in time. And we start kind of closing in on ourselves and we start moving into la la land and we just start focusing on the things that are good and are positive and don't require as much mental energy or as much emotional energy to actually focus upon. So definitely a little bit of a detriment to kick the day off in. Now we don't sit in that for very long. The moon in this Leo energy going to try and beautiful interaction with the sun in this Aries energy. So we need to talk about this for a second. This is the last aspect that the moon and Leo is going to be making before going void, of course. So there's that. Lucky for us, it's a powerful aspect. However, the sun is in the very late degrees of Aries energy. Again, we're preparing to shift into Taurus energy here tomorrow, Friday, the 19th. And so what this means is, is we're at the critical crisis degrees of this Aries energy. And this means that the restlessness, the ants in our pants, the impulse, the urges, they're going to be strong. And not saying that this is a bad interaction, because of course, when the moon and the sun come together in any kind of way, there's a new emotional awareness. There's a new aha moment. There's a realization, if you will, on what it is that we want to kind of do, what we want to build, what we want to create, what it is that we have to kind of clear out of the way in order to jump in and start something fresh. And because this is a trine between fire energies, not only is this going to help kind of burn the cords and burn the systems, the structures, the limit thoughts, the limiting emotions down in order to clear the space for us to start seeing clearly, but it also kind of regenerates, rejuvenates, renews, resurrects a spark of fire of flame that of course is going to be the emotional awareness on what it is that we want to do, what we want to build, what we want to create. 8.03 a.m. Again, Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to go void, of course. And when the moon is void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are not stable. And so especially because the moon in Leo energy is that heart space and we're making a dramatic shift into the Virgo energy that's going to pull us in inward. We have to kind of get introverted now. This is definitely going to be a major flex in energy. We shift into that Virgo energy 10, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. About an hour-ish later, we are going to have the very first aspect pop off with the moon in Virgo, and it's going to be an interesting dynamic with the North Node in Aries energy. So reminder, North Node in Aries energy trying to get us on the right path to kind of move forward in our soul's mission, in our soul's purpose. We are kind of looking to the options available, opportunities available at this present moment. We're trying to sort out the pros and cons the good, the bad, the ugly, the everything in between on what it is that we want to do, where it is that we want to go, where it is that we need to grow. And so again, reminder, the moon in this Virgo energy needs to kind of orient to the problem air, the problematic areas first and foremost. We have to identify the issue in order to actually fix it, resolve it. So suddenly we're looking at our options. We're looking at our opportunities. We're looking at the path, the plan, the strategy that we thought we were kind of, you know, in alignment with. We're starting to dissect it. We're starting to pick it apart. And there's nothing wrong with this, but it is going to kind of put a pause 
on us kind of formulating any more details to that path, that plan, that strategy in moving forward. The moon then makes a very interesting interaction with Venus. Venus, of course, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She is in this Aries energy. Again, she is anticipating the sun moving into Taurus energy because that means that she is going to be in her rulership. Because she is in Aries energy right now, she's a little bit more straightforward, more blunt, more to the point with what it is that she is thinking and feeling, what it is that she wants, needs, and desires, what it is that she needs to see change and transform in her physical realm and reality in order to create more happiness, joy, safety, security, stability. The moon in Virgo interacting with Venus in this Aries energy, definitely going to ruffle some feathers just a tad. Keeping in mind that we have some major events, including Venus, taking place here tomorrow when the sun actually does shift into Taurus energy. We are at a choice point, at a peak precipice point, at a decision point for us realizing what it is that, again, needs to stay, needs to go, what it is that we want to build towards, what it is that we want to continue to pour into. The moon in Virgo helping us to focus in on the smaller details of the greater, grander picture that our heart space wants us to start piecing together. The moon is then going to interact with Pluto, the great transformer himself in this Aquarius energy in a very tough way. This is definitely going to pressurize that mental plane, probably bring up a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities, probably bring up and illuminate the problematic areas of our lives that we're looking to fix and grow through and heal and repair. The beautiful thing is... Pluto does a deep dive in our psyche, really takes us on a trip down the dark memory lane where it is that we didn't feel in power, where it is that we didn't feel in control, where it is that we allowed other people to have power and control over us. And therefore, especially in this Aquarius energy, we're trying to break free from those relationship dynamics, from those restricted type of, let's call it, situations and circumstances, those limiting thoughts, limiting beliefs, limiting emotions. The Aquarius energy wants us to do better, wants us to grow, wants is to improve and therefore we're examining the psyche we're doing a deep dive in the programming in the conditioning and the moon in virgo is helping to dissect where it is that this negative ass narrative that these fearful thoughts that these insecurities where they have to be kind of flipped into a better script in order for us to actually move on move forward Con continuing to remind you here that Mercury, who rules over this Virgo energy, still retrograde. So we're still looking back. We're still trying to resolve issues from the past. We're still taking a good look at some of the situations and circumstances that we have found ourselves in over the course of our lifetime, where power and control were not in our favor, and where it is that we now have to boss up, take accountability, responsibility for giving that power away. So does this really sound like it's going to feel good? No, it's not supposed to. Again, we're supposed to be highlighting the problematic areas at the beginning of this moon and Virgo transit in order for us to fix, heal, and repair said issues. So Pluto's doing a deep dive. He's saying, you know what? We're not wasting any time. We have some Aries energy still left here to help us kind of burn through the attachments, burn through the cords, if you will. We need to bring up all of this darkness, all of this struggle, all of this pain, this trauma, these wounds, in order for us to actually kind of, you know, again, change and transform it into something better, especially before we move into Taurus season. Taurus season is going to ground us out, make us a little bit more aware of our physical bodies, our physical form, really pressurizing us to do what we need to do to not only nurture and nourish ourselves back to a place of health and wellness and safety, security and stability, but put us in a situation to actually see what it is that we can build and create in our lives to promote happiness and healthiness and wellness and safety and security, stability, all of those lovely things. So Pluto is not wasting any time he's saying here here let's just unpack all of these dark memories all of these problematic areas all of the times that you gave your power away all of the issues in your life that you don't feel you have power and control over right now the moon and virgo going to break it down into the smallest finest of details to see where it is that we can make some improvements flipping the script and overriding a lot of that programming a lot of that conditioning Things are going to get even more interesting because the moon in Virgo then makes an interesting aspect, first of all, with Mercury, ruler of the Virgo energy, Mercury retrograde still in this Aries energy, and then Chiron, the wounded healer, also in this Aries energy. So what this tells me is there is a major reflection back 
to who it is that we had to be, who it is that we once were, who it is that we essentially became in survival mode, who it is now that we are, who it is now that we're trying to become. And again, because Mercury and Chiron have been working very closely together to bring forth this new version of self, bring forth this new identity, we do have to take a good look back at the wounds, at the pain, at the trauma that we accumulated by not operating in our wholeness, not operating in our power. So again, the moon interacting with Mercury, that's our heart space and our head space, they're not on the same page. They're trying to get on the same page. The Virgo energy is trying to sort through the details that, of course, our mental plane is focused on looking back at the past, how it is that we once saw ourselves, where it is that we're changing our perception our perspective of who it is that we are, our worth, our values, our skills, our talents. The Chiron energy being the wounded healer, we have the option, we have the choice. Yes, we have to expose the wounds in order for us to attempt to heal them. This is what this whole process with the moon and Virgo is all about. However, there is a lot of strength, a lot of power that we are failing to see within ourselves. There's a lot of talent, a lot of skills that we are failing to see within ourselves. Yes, we have to feel a little bit down, a little bit dark, a little bit down in the dump, so to speak, in order for us to build ourselves up in a much better way. And of course, the moon in Virgo does help in that process to break us down, to beat ourselves up, to dissect the smaller details of what it is that we're thinking and feeling at first so that we can bring it into our awareness and once you know about it you can do something with it and once you can do something with it we're going to attempt to heal said wounds to repair some of these issues and of course to resolve a lot of the problematic areas that are coming right in our faces <laughs>